Thing. This ain't happening. Uh, I'm out here freezing my tail feathers off and I can't. Hello, this is Henry with Woodworking by LPI and welcome back to my channel. Um, you know, it's winter. <laughs> it's cold. It's getting cold, and it's going to get colder. I mean, this is uh, the first part of the year. We really haven't even hit, uh, you know, official, per se, really cold weather here in Ohio, uh, which comes more toward next month. But still, it gets cold. And if you got a workshop, whether it be out in your garage or whether it be down in a basement or any type of workspace outside, such as a shed, or you have a full uh, workshop, or what I use my barn, it's still going to get cold. How do you heat? How do you heat your, uh, your, uh, your, your workspace, okay? Safely, efficiently, and cost-effectively, cost okay? Okay, so in this video, I'm kind of go, go through the, uh, the heater I use and some of the steps that I've taken to try and keep the, the workshop here a little warmer in the uh, wintertime and a little cooler in the summer, but more so toward the heat. So, this space here is quite big and as you can see, I have insulated the backside of the barn. I, I don't really remember, per se, the, uh, the R value that I put into it. Um, I'd have to think about that. Oh, there it is up there. R13. Um, so I'm trying to keep the cool air out because in the wintertime, this place becomes really a sieve. You know, the air blows from the, from the west and it just kind of like goes right through the barn. And last winter, it got like 10 below and I'm out here trying to work in the wood shop and I'm like, I got to come up with a solution. Something ain't right. This ain't, this ain't happening. Uh, I'm out here freezing my tail feathers off and I can't work that. And the equipment doesn't work really well. It's not really good on the equipment to do so. Um, so what do you do? Well, you look at a heater. Now there are different types of heating systems that you can get uh, for your, uh, for your workspace. And most of them are very expensive. Okay. You can do, <clears throat> excuse me, a, uh, a propane gas uh, heater. You can do a pellet heater. Um, you can do the uh, the heat system, you know, that uses uh, hot, uh, hot water. All those are very expensive, especially in your upfront costs. And I don't have a whole lot of money, <laughs> money. So I went with the option at work. I put in installation and then I bought a heater. And what I got was a kerosene diesel heater, a uh, jet heater. Uh, we call it forced air, but I call it a jet heater. And it's worked out very well for me. And that's what we're going to talk about just a little bit. So let's go over and take a peek at it. And we'll walk through just a little bit of the information on it and see how this works. Okay, so we're over here by the heater. I'm, I'm going to show that to you here in just a brief minute. But um, I want to go through our, my handy dandy paperwork here and uh, kind of read you some information on the heater that I got. Um, it is a DeWalt forced air kerosene uh, diesel heater, um, and I am not sponsored by De uh, DeWalt. I don't have any affiliation with it. This is my own homegrown review. Okay, so I need to say that legally up front and get all that out of the way. Um, but it's worked so well for me. <laughs> I had an older one, and it went belly up. And I'll explain why it went belly up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which is one of the things you want to look out for when it comes to these kerosene uh, forced air heaters. So this one here is 140,000 BTU. It'll heat uh, 3,000 square feet, or a little over 3,000 square feet. Um, it consumes uh, fuel at a rate of about a gallon and a half an hour. But it does have an eight and a half gallon uh, tank on it. And you can uh, use kerosene or diesel. Now this is an interesting story. I was using kerosene because, you know, I'm fairly new to the heating process, except for the old kerosene heaters, you know, used to have when I was a kid. Um, you know, the house would get really cold because uh, it was drafty uh, when I was growing up. And my dad would bring in a kerosene heater and, and put it in the house and he'd go out and get kerosene. Okay. Well, if, if you kind of look at kerosene prices <laughs> these days, I mean, the last time I looked at kerosene, it was like $3.99 a gallon. Holy schmollies. Diesel, on the other hand, was a little under two ninety a gallon. Total difference. I mean, you know, that's that's over a buck savings a gallon. So, 
if you're using this thing a lot and it's consuming a gallon and a half an hour and you're out here say six eight hours now we're talking some bucks so i went to diesel and it's been a lot cheaper for me and i don't have to pay the price but in actuality diesel and kerosene are a lot alike basically the color difference okay but make sure if you look at one of these things that it is capable of doing kerosene slash diesel okay i'm i'm not going to say yay or nay uh, because different brands different models uh, do different things mine does do kerosene and diesel um, so make sure you check that out if you want to do that um, um, this one here um, is uh, constructed of steel that has wheels it's even easy to move around which was another concern of mine um, and it gets really hot <laughs> now i don't run it continuously because of the installation here in the workshop um, I just basically use it to warm it up uh, because it does put off CO2, okay, and that's not a good thing. So what you want to do is uh, be cautious of that as well. And I run it for a little while, let it warm up just a little bit, and then I'll turn it off. Okay, so um, right now it, it is, according to my temperature gauge, uh, it's right around 40 degrees in here, which isn't too bad. Um, yesterday when I was out here, it was 30. Um, the coldest I've been out here is 12 below. So you can see, you know, if you don't want your tail feathers, you know, frozen off, <laughs> you definitely want a heating system. Okay. I don't recommend running this continuously. Okay. It does put off CO2. Um, definitely keep that in mind if you're looking into one of these uh, heating systems. So let's take a look at the heater and um, see what you think of it. Okay. So this is the DeWalt model that I was talking about. And it, um, like I said, it has an eight and a half uh, gallon tank here. It has a electronic switch here that says by temperature. Okay, and an on and off switch. And it has a pressure gauge back here that shows you the pressure coming into uh, to the fan. And I'll walk around the other side over here. It's pretty basic and it uh, it works very well. And if you've ever used one of these, and I'll start it up here for you in a minute, but if you ever use one of these things, it throws off a lot of heat really, really quick. Um, the pluses to it is it works very well, very quick, and it does use a temperature setting when you turn it on here, which is variable temperature setting. And they make it intentionally set up so it's really easy to use. That's, that's the biggest reason that uh, uh, that I got it because it's just user friendly. There's really not a whole lot to it. Um, if you look inside one of these things, uh, it, it's basically um, a fan back here in the back to an igniter to the fuel infusion, and then it kicks it out. It, there's really not a whole lot to it. Um, if it does break down, um, it'll break down in the back with some carbon pieces in the back where the uh, behind where the fan spins. You can get parts for that. Don't go buy another one. Take a look. There are plenty of YouTube videos on how to fix them. Um, and, I, you know, I can't see paying big bucks for something that you can fix yourself. So I've been using this now, I think, two seasons. I think it's been two seasons. Uh, and it's worked very well for me. Like I said, I don't run it continuously. I do let it warm up, shut it off. Okay. So um, most of the pros on this is ease of use. Consumption of fuel is uh, fairly low, about a gallon and a half an hour. It's really not low, but it's low compared to, to some others that I looked at. And it has a big capacity on the fuel tank. And it uses diesel. Those are some of the pros. And it's worked very well for me. Now, some of the cons is, one, the location of the tank gas cap right there, or the diesel fuel cap. Okay. And as you can see, it's under this cowling. So that doesn't work really well. Okay, and another con that I saw was the short cord. I have to put this cord on it. Of course, I think they anticipate you getting a cord because, you know, long extension cord because they, get, they provide this for you. Assembly on it wasn't too bad. It comes disassembled. Uh, and I solved the problem, of course, with the extension cord. Okay. Um, I solved the problem with the extension cord, but... With regard to that fuel, uh, it's really hard to pour into, especially even if you have a flex funnel. So, okay, so what I um, use, I use an automatic pump. That's how I got around that. 
and as you can see it's uh, battery operated I put it inside the gas tank and then I take this funnel right here and I stuff it inside the gas tank for the uh, for the uh, the heater okay so that kind of resolves that issue of getting underneath to get to that um, beyond that it um, it's a very good heater and it works out very well puts off a lot of heat like I said it, uh, it's 140,000 BTU and it uh, does a little over 3,000 square feet this barn is somewhere in the realm of 1,500 square feet so you don't have to have it on very long um, but if you want a quick solution for heat this works very well okay so let me fire it up I'll let you take a peek at it running and then uh, we'll wrap this up okay now I got it plugged in and we're gonna fire it up but I did want you to see the digital display on the side for the variable temperature gauge okay and as you can see right here it is saying that it is detecting 44 degrees okay and like I said there's a power button here and then you have the variable button or the knob rather here okay so basically all I'm gonna do and this is gonna get loud so so if you're listening in headphones um, you'll want to back off just a little bit because it's gonna get loud okay so just a just a warning all right so I'm gonna turn this on I'm gonna turn the temperature gauge up and that way you can see how it's running Okay, I didn't want to turn that on for a real long period of time because like I said, it is get loud. I'm not really sure how the camera is going to handle that uh, sound, so I wanted to give you a little bit of warning um, on the sound. Um, I, I'm very pleased with the heater um, and it, it's a very good short-term solution or an interim solution in lieu of a heating system. Um, I'm, not, I'm not beating up on these other type of heating systems, uh, fireplace or uh, pellet or... Um, the aerated heat, uh, you know, I, I'm not beating up on those at all. I'm just looking at it from a cost perspective, okay? So this here worked out really well. It was a little over, I think, 300 and some odd dollars. Don't quote me on that price. Prices always change. So I, I don't know sometimes if I want to tell you a price or not, but I want to give you a ballpark, okay? But uh, 300, 350, $400, I think. So that's the ballpark right there, and I apologize. I will put a link up for it down in the description, so in case you're considering it, uh, no obligation to buy, of course, but considering looking at it, um, you can do that. Very cheap solution. Okay. One final con, and I don't want to end the video on this, but one final con is it does use electricity. So if you're going to, <laughs> if you're going to be using this for long periods of time, your electric bill will reflect the cost of it. Okay, and thankfully I only use it, uh, like I said, periodically, just enough to warm up the place, shut it off. Um, but beyond that, it's been awesome. I, I can't complain about it whatsoever. I wish I had it when it was really, really cold. Uh, so I think I said I've had it two seasons. Um, I have another one over there that I was using. So my time period might be wrong. But I can tell you one thing for certain. I did not have it when I was out here freezing my tail feathers off. Uh, it was seriously cold. And I wish I had it. So, good product, uh, good heater, and a lot cheaper than installing something else um, in the long term. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the long term I'll go with something a little bigger, but right now that worked out really well. And I wanted to show it to you for your workshop. This is And I hope this provided uh, valuable information for you for a temporary solution for your heat. So. This is Henry with Woodworking by LPI, providing you woodworking solutions, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, take care.